we have been dealing with the five things keeping you from leveling up. And we are on part four, right? And so what we've dealt with is, one, your environment is outdated, therefore you need to purge. Uh, part two is your perspective remains unchallenged. Um, and part three is your anointing stinks. And part four today and yesterday is your soil isn't receiving care. So one reason that perhaps you are not leveling up, you're not entering into a new level of authority, you're not increasing the power level that God has uh, assigned to you is because your soil S-O-I-L, is not re receiving the necessary care that it needs. Therefore, your soil is malnourished. One reason you might not be entering into the new season, um, one reason you might not be um, experiencing um, the increase of power and prosperity in the way that you need to in your own life is because your soil is not receiving the care that it needs. Let's look at John chapter 15, as I reminded you yesterday, that in the context of Jesus Christ in John chapter 15, an agrarian society, meaning agriculture, was something that Jesus and the disciples, and in the context, they were very familiar with. So whenever Jesus refers to soil and plants and, and bearing fruit, this was something that people in this context could very well understand because that that's what their life was kind of centered around. And so we're dealing with this, this agrarian context, and I told you that I was in deep discussion with botanists, B-O-T-A-N-I-S-T, um, those who are specialists in um, raising and building plants and crops. And so they were able to answer many questions that I want to bring to your doorstep on today as to why we could not or why we may not be increasing the power or we won't be um, stepping into that new level of authority. It's 2020, and I declare that you will be experiencing increase and you will be faithful with it this year. John chapter 15, I am the grapevine and my father is the gardener. He cuts every branch that is, uh, every branch of mine that does not produce fruit and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so that they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me and I will remain in you for a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine and you cannot produce fruit unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit for apart from me, you can't do anything. Anyone who does not remain in me Anyone who does not abide in me, anyone who does not take up residency in me is thrown away like useless branches and they will eventually wither. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you take up residency in me and allow the word of God to take up residency inside of you, anything you ask when you open your mouth and speak, it shall come to pass. It shall come to existence. When you produce much fruit, then that is evidence you are my true disciples. When you bear fruit, that is evidence that you're maturing in the Christian faith. When you bear fruit, when your character begins to flourish, this is evidence that you're growing in me, not, not doing good deeds temporarily. And it says, this also brings great glory to my father. Verse 9, I have loved you even as the father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, when you obey my commandments, you remain in my love just as I obey my father's commandments and I remain in his love. Verse 11, I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy shall overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. You are now my friends since I've told you everything the Father has confided in me. Verse 16. You didn't choose me. I chose you. 
I appointed you, I called you to get up and to go and to reproduce fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in Jesus' name. This is my command. Love one another. I talked about botanists. I talked about the things that they shared with us. They taught me about seeds and how seeds are packaged miracles and how seeds are just waiting on the right external conditions so that they can begin to give birth to what's on the inside of me. And I reminded you that there's some packaged miracles inside of your life. There's some packaged miracles in 2020 that all it needs is for you to give it the right external conditions. And if you give it the right external conditions, the prepackaged miracle that God already has for you in the year 2020 will begin to give birth. External conditions, making sure you give it exactly what it needs. Your life needs some specific things in order to give birth to the things that God already has packaged for you. I'm going to say it one more time. Your life needs specific things in order to give birth to the very things that God has packaged for you in 2020. Some things God has for you is just waiting for the right move from you, right? And so I want to talk a little bit about your soil needing care. And the reason that you're unable to enter or have been unable to increase your level of power is because your soil is malnourished. Let's keep in mind we're talking about plants because Jesus in this text is talking explicitly about plants, right? And giving birth and giving fruit and bearing fruit, right? Because he knows if he uses the context or the illustration of plants that the people in this agrarian society will will better understand what he's talking about. And I told you that after talking to botanists, they told me that they said there are a couple of there are a few reasons why trees don't bear fruit or plants do not bear fruit. And they said number one is because they are not mature enough. Go and listen on yesterday to get the details into what I'm talking about when it comes to maturity. Right? But the second thing they said is that the reason that plants do not bear fruit is because they do not have enough nutrients or they have too much nutrients. Get this, not enough or too much nutrients. It seems like it doesn't make sense, but let me try to make it clear to you. The reason why plants, one reason, another reason why plants don't bear fruit, meaning they don't reproduce of themselves they don't bear good fruit is because they do not have enough of the right nutrients in their lives or they have too much of one particular nutrient. And so I was listening to one of this, um, one of the botanists who had 30 years of experience and he said too much of any particular nutrient means that a plant can potentially put on great looking leaves but many times won't bother to make flour or produce fruit. Let me say that again. He said, one reason a plant won't produce fruit is because it doesn't have enough nutrients or it has too much of one particular nutrient. And he says, when it has too much of one nutrient, it will potentially produce nice looking leaves, meaning it will look nice, but it won't ever bother to produce fruit. Everybody get me? And so when you think about that, you need a perfect balance of the right nutrients in your life if you're going to produce good fruit. Meaning you don't need, you don't need an overabundance of one particular nutrient and a lack of all the other essential nutrients and expect to produce good fruit. You need a balance of all of the right nutrients in your life. If that seed, that prepackaged miracle is ever going to have the right conditions to begin to grow. What I'm saying to you is entering into 2020, make sure you're not focusing or over focusing on one nutrient or one area while you're lacking in all of the other areas. What am, make it more plain for them, Isaac. You can have a whole lot of church. Somebody say nutrient, nutrient. You can have a whole lot of church 
and still not bear good fruit. You can have a whole lot of nutrients coming from just going to church. You can have a whole lot of church and never read your Bible. And because you have a whole lot of church, one nutrient, and don't have any time reading the Bible, another nutrient, you'll, you'll look good. You'll have, you'll have leaves that appear to look good, but you will never bother to bear fruit because you'll tell yourself, I go to church every Sunday. I go to church every Wednesday. I'm always at church. That's an overabundance of a nutrient while you're lacking in other essential nutrients. You can read a whole lot of Bible, right? One nutrient and have very little prayer life. Another nutrient. So what am I what am I saying? You need a perfect balance of all of the essential nutrients in your life if you are going to bear fruit and God has called you to be a a, a good fruit bearing tree. I'm telling you what the text says. And so what I'm also saying is let's not over emphasize one area, prayer. Oh, I pray a whole lot, but I never read my Bible. Or I pray a whole lot, but I never spend time in God's presence. Or I go to church all the time, but I never take time to pray. I'm saying to you that we need a, a balance of all of the nutrients. This is what the botanist taught me. And so I said, let me talk to the Lord. And, and this is this is what the Lord is saying to us. Now, now I'm, I don't want to I don't want to lose you here, but follow me. He says, not enough nutrients or too much nutrients. Not enough nutrients. So if a plant, if a tree is not receiving enough nutrients, it will never be able to bear fruit. Not enough nutrients, you will never be able to bear good fruit. Write this down, macro, M-A-C-R-O. And then you write this down, micro, M-I-C-R-O, right? Macro, micro. There's two types of nutrients. You don't have to know this. There's two types of nutrients. There's macronutrients and there's micronutrients. The macronutrients are the types of nutrients that the plants need a lot of in large amounts, right? So if you think about a plant, there's some things that a plant needs and it needs a whole lot of it all the time. But then there's a such thing called micronutrients, which are the nutrients that a plant needs in regular small amounts. I'm going to say it one more time. There's macronutrients and there's micronutrients. Macro are the types of nutrients that a plant needs a whole lot of all of the time. But then there's the micronutrients that a plant needs only small amounts of it regularly. Just small amounts, right? But you got to have it regularly. But you can't just have macronutrients and never have the micronutrients. What are you saying? If I asked you this question, if I asked you, what does a plant need in order to survive? If I asked you all this, you know what you would tell me? Some people would say a plant needs water and a plant needs light, right? Most people would respond to me if I say to you, what does a plant need in order to survive? Most people would say Water and sunlight. And guess what? That is true. That's a macro. That's that's the big thing that it needs. But let me let me help you. It doesn't just need that a plant needs water. It needs sunlight. It needs space for root development. Right. Because if you don't have space for the roots to develop, it won't be able to grow. It needs carbon dioxide that comes from us. Right. From humans. It needs oxygen and it needs the right temperature suitable for it so that it can grow. Let me say it one more time. I'm not trying to take you back to elementary school, but I'm trying to go somewhere. The macronutrients, the big things that a plant needs, water, sunlight, it needs space for root development, it needs carbon dioxide, it needs the right temperature, it needs oxygen. Those are all of the big things that a plant needs. Everybody with me? But here's the thing. Anybody who has a green thumb and people who know how to really truly grow plants, you understand that a plant doesn't just need all of those big things. A plant also needs small things too, and it needs it in small amounts. It also needs 
boron, chlorine, manganese, iron, zinc, copper, things that I don't even know about, right? But when you talk to someone, a gardener or a botanist, people who are well versed, they would tell you, hey, don't just focus on the big things. You need the small things, too. What do we do? We just go to the store and get fertilizer. Why? Because the fertilizer that we purchase from the store has all of those small nutrients that a plant needs. Come back home. Come back. Come back. Let me bring you back home. The botanist told me. That one reason a plant doesn't bear fruit is because it doesn't have enough of the right nutrients. And all I want to remind you is this. You need a perfect balance of all of the nutrients in your life if you're going to grow properly. Properly is the operative word. Not too fast, not too slow. Not just in one area, but in all areas. A plant needs the big things and the plant needs the small things. It's easy for us to go get fertilizer, but if you take your time, then you'll know how to create the fertilizer yourself. But get this, your soil, us, our soil is just like a plant. It needs both macro and micronutrients. So if you was listening, this is going to make sense. When you think about our lives, we need both macro and micronutrients. What are the macronutrients we need? What are the big things that we need? God's love, God's grace, salvation, faith, the word of God. What are the, macro, what are the big things that we need that we can't do without? God's love, grace, salvation, faith, the word of God. We need these things in big and large amounts, right? But there's also some micronutrients that if we don't get, we won't be able to grow properly. See, most of us will just stop it. I get God's love. I'm saved. You know, I, I believe in God's grace. I, I have faith and I read the word of God. But you don't have the micronutrients. Consistent worship. Prayer. Fellowship. Giving, which is generosity. And a fasting lifestyle. I'll say it one more time. Yes, we need the big things. We need God's love. We need God's grace. We need salvation. We need faith. We need the word of God. Those are the big things. But if you think carefully and you pay close attention, you will not be able to bear good fruit just by focusing on those big things. If you don't spend time in consistent worship, prayer, fellowship with other believers, with Christians, giving, generosity, and fasting. That's why in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus Christ focused on giving, he focuses on prayer, and he focuses on fasting. Those are micronutrients, things that we need regularly in small amounts. You can't just thrive off of grace, salvation, and love, and faith, and the word, but you're not praying, you're not worshiping, you're not fellowshipping, you're not giving, and you're not fasting. I hope you got that. All right, number three, this goes quick, this goes quick. So the first thing, again, is the first reason why we don't uh, reproduce is that we're not mature enough. The second reason is we don't have enough or we have too much nutrients. And I'm encouraging you not to focus on just the big things, but also the things that are easily to overlook. This is why we need to fast regularly, pray regularly, don't have to pray 20 hours a day every day, but you need to be praying regularly. You need to give. You need to be generous. You need to be in fellowship, right? And you need to fast. These are the micronutrients that people overlook and the reason why we can't truly bear good fruit, right? And so the third thing is this. The third thing is when I was talking to him and listening to him, he said, there's another reason why plants don't produce fruit. And I said, I'm listening. He said, insects. Insects, I-N-S-E-C-T-S, -E huh? He said, the third reason why, why plants don't reproduce is insects. He says, bad infestation prevents fruit. Oh, yes, yeah. somebody said, oh, glory, because um, I know exactly what that is. And listen, he said, the reason that 
people, plants do not grow or develop fruit. They might grow, but they never produce fruit. You might be growing, but you never produce fruit. You never produce good fruit. You never reproduce yourself. He said insects. He said bad infestation prevents fruit. This and this is when he said the, the second part. That's when I said, "Oh Lord, that 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 makes sense." He said, "Infestations will cause a plant to become stressed, and when the plant is stressed, a plant won't produce fruit." I said, "What? Bad infestations in your immediate environment will cause a certain level of stress that will prevent you." From producing fruit. A plant. When there's insects. Inside of the, the environment of the plant. And there's an infestation of these insects. It will begin to cause stress on the plant. And when the plant begins to stress. It can't focus on bearing fruit. So the environment has to be healthy. In order for the plant to produce fruit. And many of us have the wrong things. And people insects. In our environment and our environment is causing a lot of stress in our lives. And because we're overly stressed because of our environment, fruit cannot be produced. But let me say this before some of you already deem your environment stressful. And that's the reason why you can't get what you need to get because all of your environment, two things. It could be self-inflicted stress or it could be the infestation of something. So before you put your environment on something else, your stress might be self-inflicted or it could be the infestation of something or someone. Somebody has some insects in their environment, an infestation of something and over. A, when I say infestation, that means an overabundance of something that was not invited or an infestation of something that has overstayed its welcome. Huh? There's some people, some things in your life that have overstayed its welcome. There's some things in your life that are that should be gone that are still there. And because they, he, she, it is still in your environment, it's causing stress. And stress and fruit do not mix. Some of us are overly stressed. And you can only focus on stress. And you, you, you can't focus on stress and fruit at the same time. All right, move on, move on, move on, move on, move on. The fourth thing, he said, the reason why a plant or a tree will not produce fruit is because not enough water. All right, not enough water. First thing, not mature enough, not enough nutrients or too much of one nutrient. Insects, bad infestation prevents fruit. But then he said, not enough water. He said, a tree will not produce fruit if it doesn't have enough water. And this is what he said, literally his words. When a tree does not have enough water, it will cause a plant or a tree to become stressed. What? That word again. What? On two, two out of five of the things he told me has to deal with stress. Mm. Ah. So not enough water will cause a plant to become stressed. Everybody with me? If a plant doesn't receive enough water, it would not be able to produce fruit. And in the word of God, whenever you see water, water is symbolic of the word of God. Huh? How am I, how am I making this relevant for us? If you do not have enough of the word of God in your life, you will find yourself easily stressed. I know somebody say, oh, that's that that's true. When you do not have enough of the word of God, the water, the living water in your life, you will not be able to reproduce of yourself. And so here's the thing. Many of us are producing, quote unquote, fruit and not even connected to the word of God. Therefore, that fruit that you believe you're bearing is that fruit from willpower, not the spirit of, of, of the Holy Spirit of God's power. Right. And so what I'm saying to you is you need water. You need the word of God. Not enough of the word of God in your life will cause you to become stressed. Now, get this part of it. 
Don't miss this. I know you're ready to go, but don't miss this. You need to give me about two or three minute, extra minutes. Not enough water will cause a tree or a plant to become stressed. But get this about water. I don't want you to miss this. If you, if you don't have enough water, let's think about a tree. This is what I learned. I learned this. I learned this. If you don't have, if a tree doesn't have enough water, it won't be able to develop a root network. I want to say root, but I'm going to say a root network. Get this, a root network with other trees around it. Ah, don't miss this. If a tree is not receiving enough water, it will not be able to develop a root network with the other trees around it. What is a root network? I'm glad you asked. A root network is when the roots of the tree intertwined with the nearby trees in order to be able to assist one another with growth through the seasons. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I just helped somebody. I just helped somebody. Some of us, all the Lone Star introverts, all the self-righteous, those of us, we like to grow on our own by ourselves, lonesome. But the truth of the matter is the people of God, the children of God must always develop root networks with other trees, right? We need fellowship. We can't grow and we cannot produce fruit without root networks. Root networks is what you're missing in your life. Get this. If you don't have enough water, you won't be able to develop a root network. A root network is when a tree's roots begin to intertwine with other roots in the nearby vicinity so that they can assist one another. When I'm lacking in some area, you can assist me and help me so that I can continue to grow. Because sometimes you have off seasons, sometimes you're low, sometimes you're down, sometimes you don't feel like it, sometimes the enemy has the best of you and you need someone to help you up a root network, but you can't develop a root network if you don't have water, the word of God. And the other thing he said is that one reason that a tree does not grow or develop fruit is because not enough light. Not enough light. And so in the word of God, light is symbolic for the presence of God, right? And so if you think about our own lives, one reason that we, may, we might not be growing properly or one reason we might not be developing fruit is because we don't have enough light. Not the word of God, not the water. See, the problem is we, we try to substitute the water with the light, right? They can overlap, but the water and the light are distinctively different, right? They're, 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 they're and so you have the water, the word of God, but you have the light, the presence of God. Everybody with me? And so light in the word is symbolic of the presence of God. You can read the Bible and still not enter the presence of God. You can, you can pray your ritual prayers and still not take time to sit in God's presence. Right. You can do good deeds. You can feed the poor. You can, you can give alms and still not take the time to sit enter into God's presence and to just be, just to just sit in God's presence. So one of the things in 2020 you're going to commit to doing is turning off of all of your mobile devices, turning off your calendar, turning off your to-do list in your mind, and you're just going to sit in God's presence, not because you want something, not because you need him to do something, just because he is who he is and you want to learn how to just sit in the presence of God. One reason you can't receive the answer, one reason you can't grow is because you're afraid of silence and you're afraid to sit in the presence of God, sitting, just sitting, even if you don't know what you're doing, God can make up the, 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 he can fill in the gap, right? He can make up the lack. So one reason that plants don't grow is because there's not enough light. This is why he says in verse four of chapter 15, remain in me and I will remain in you for a branch cannot produce fruit. If it is severed from the vine, you cannot produce anything if you do not remain in my presence. The last thing is this. He said, the, and this is what I want, I want to leave you with. He said the reason that the last reason that plants don't produce fruit 
is because they are not pruned or they're pruned incorrectly. Don't miss this. I know you got to go to work and I know you're tired. <laughs> Write this down. One reason, he said, the last reason that plants or trees do not bear fruit, reproduce themselves, is because they are not pruned or they are pruned incorrectly. Get this. We want to bear fruit, but we also want to avoid being pruned. See, 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 we like, we like the idea of growing, but we want to grow absence of being pruned. If we don't have to be pruned, we want to avoid it by all means. And when you look at the word pruned in this text, it comes from the word kathiro, and it literally means to cleanse. It means to purge. So when you look up this word, prune, or when you read it in uh, a, a word for word translation, it says every branch in me bear, that doesn't bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he purges so that it can bring more fruit. What? Get this. Don't miss this. Jesus said that God begins to purge what we talked about in the first point a few days ago. He purges plants that grow so that they can continue to grow. How does that make sense? He, he, he begins to, to cut plants that are growing and producing fruit so that they can bear more fruit. God purges us periodically because purging induces growth. Purging induces growth. Three purposes of pruning so that when you're going through a tough season, you, are, you will be able to remember these three things. Three reasons why God prunes you. One, to correct a problem to control growth, or to increase fruit. Somebody write this on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Three reasons that God will purge or prune us. To correct a problem, to control growth, or to increase fruit. Many of us, we only refer to point one. When we feel like we're being pruned, it's because we did something bad and God is upset with us. Stop making God an angry man upstairs with a lightning bolt in his hand. God will prune us to correct the problem because he loves us, that he wants us to be correct. Or he will do it to control growth, meaning slow, consistent growth is far better than rapid, inconsistent growth. Many of us, we want to grow overnight. That's not what God wants from us. Consistent, slow growth is always better than inconsistent, rapid growth. So to correct the problem, to control growth, or to increase fruit. One, the thing that I learned from this botanist was this, when it comes to purging. They cut a plant in certain areas with strategy. Somebody write strategy. There's always strategy to the cut. Somebody needs to send that text to me. There's always strategy to the cut. And he said this. When, whenever, wherever you cut a plant, growth always follows the cut. Somebody needs to rejoice. God knows enough to know that growth always follows the cut. There is strategy in every cut you experience in your life. Even botanists know that when they cut, there's always strategy to their cut. But one thing the botanist taught me is that growth always follows the cut. Growth always follows the cut. Tell yourself that. Remind yourself that in 2020, and I bid you a good morning, growth always follows the cut. Growth always always follows the cut. Whenever you're experiencing what, ex what feels like a cut in your life, look up to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm reminded that growth 
always follows the cut because the gardener knows what the gardener is doing. The gardener wants more fruit. And so therefore the Lord will cut you in certain areas because growth always follows the cut. What do I mean by that? If you really want to know what I mean by growth always follows the cut, the cells connected to growth are located at the bottom of the plant. And when you begin to cut the plant in a certain area, the cells begin to race to the top wherever the cut is. That's what they call apical dominance. And so the cells begin to rush to wherever they see the cut. And wherever the cut is, is where the cells for growth begin to gather, therefore producing more fruit immediately. If you are experiencing a cut in a relationship, on your job, with a friend, with your own self, look up to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm reminded that growth always follows the cut. May the Lord bless you all real good. May the Lord love on you. May his countenance shine upon you. May he allow this word to speak to you and feed you throughout this day. In the name of Jesus, you all have a wonderful day. It is December the 31st. Happy, happy new year. Happy new year. We are gathering here one more time for part five. It is being a slave to your appetite. I'm going to talk about your appetite and food, and I'm going to give you something to keep with you for the rest of the new year. Be here on January the 1st because we want to finish our fast strong. We don't just want to get to the finish line. We want to get through it, right? Luke 4, Jesus finished his fast and he kept with his consecration. Join me here one more time tomorrow as we talk about the fifth part of why you're not entering into your level of power that you need to. Y'all have a wonderful day. Um, teleconference, my phone uh, decided, the device started to act crazy so I can't ask you all to speak to me because I can't unmute you. I apologize for that. Um, but... Um, I'm just going to talk to Facebook for a couple of minutes. Please, teleconference, you all log off. I won't be able to unmute you and talk to you because the phone is malfunctioning. It's okay. Um, this word was for me. Somebody said on Facebook, no, this word was for Isaac. That's why I wanted to share with you so much. Listen, whoever I asked to text me, text me the exact way I, I said it somewhere in the message. There's strategy. There's always strategy to the cut. And text me, uh, growth always follows the cut, because that can be the title of this message whenever the Lord gives me a green light to preach this in public. Um, growth always follows the cut. Um, but the gardener knows that there's always strategy to every cut. And if a botanist on earth with just 30 years of experience knows that there should be strategy to every cut, what do you think God knows? God knows that there's absolutely strategy to everything in your life. Everything, you know, I was going to post today the, the, heartbreak, you, the heartbreak you experienced in 2019 will be, well, no, that, that's, not even, that's not even how it goes. It goes another way, um, which takes away from the point that I was trying to give you all. At any rate, I'm going to give it to you. The thing that broke your heart in 2019 will be the thing that corrects your vision in 2020. The thing that broke your heart in 2019 will be the thing that corrects your vision in 2020. The Lord knows that everything, every cut, every cut has strategy, right? Bless you all. Listen, um, you need this word because there's going to be a moment in time where you won't have this daily devotional and you won't be able to depend on anybody else that you're going to have to go back and you're going to have to depend on your note taking and what the Lord has exposed you to in these 30 days. I need more growth in certain areas before I come back to you and try to help you in certain areas. So I have to retreat and I have to nurture me and I have to allow the Lord to nurture me as well. Um, but these 30 days should be significant for you to go back and you to practice and regurgitate and work with and work on. Um, and 
it, you know, I I think I might um, it, maybe by early summer we can do a part two to this, not just a fast, but a part two to this. I know by March reasonably we'll do a 21 day word fast. You might overlook that, but it'll bless you more than you know. So I have the word group that we're in. You can unsubscribe from it if you don't want to receive any more emails after this fast. But if you might want to be a part of that 21 day word fast, stay connected. Um, I have an advanced academy, which is 12 people only that I will mentor this year. Uh, but that's a cost. Everything else is free. The mentoring is a cost associated with that. Uh, you'll have to send me a personal email to express interest in that. Uh, but that's that's going to be rugged. That's going to be heavy. So, um, again, that's something different. But I'm glad and I'm excited and I appreciate each of you for trusting me with the word of God. Um, and I'm praying that this is not just head knowledge, but this becomes heart experience for you. And that you experience God in a brand new way and that you cherish the, those experiences and that you don't just grow in knowledge, but you begin to bear fruit. You reproduce of yourself in due season. I love you all.